we have to leave very soon so i welcome uh, uh, everybody who's joined us online and physically uh, i hope more people may join us uh, in a couple of minutes but let's start we are already 2 minutes late so as a part of the azadi ka amrit mahotsav celebrations uh, uh, being conducted at pondicherry university we are very very happy to contribute to the green world campaign and as a part of the green world campaign pondicherry university department of electronic media and mass communication in association with our office of green campus and the office of the dean students welfare and also the association for promoting sustainability in campuses and communities is bringing this event to you today uh i welcome all of uh, the participants i see that we have participants from all over india who are joining us from different states online and uh, i welcome each one of you uh, of course uh, the students in the class right now uh, they are students of ma mass communication first year and msc electronic media first year of the department of electronic media and mass communication and uh, it's a great uh, uh, pleasure to be interacting with some of the team members from the climate force antarctica let's fight climate change uh, expedition 2022 i will do the introductions later on but i would uh, first and foremost uh, request our dean in charge professor tarani karasu to speak a few words because he has to leave for another meeting so sir over to you pa yeah am i audible okay thank you yeah thank you dr radhika and the all the members who are online and uh, offline and i am happy to know that the uh, pondicherry university with the help of department of electronic media and mass mass communication and office of dean student welfare and uh, office of uh, green campus Uh, with the association of promoting sustainability in campuses and communities they are celebrating the world earth day uh, this is very important uh, uh, event because nowadays we are facing in the we are uh, going through the uh, uh, era where we have utilized or we have uh, uh, used all the resources all the comfort whatever our ancestors made to be livable in the globe now we have on the advent of the uh, industrial revolution uh, revolution uh, in the roughly in the year of 1920s to up to day so we have been using the resources both the coal as well as the uh, petroleum products we have been using this but uh, we have we have not thought about the what is the effect of the climate or environment or pollution all those things because those day those days the industrial revolution or the uh, climate change or the environment everything where the uh, interest of only scientist or policy makers like this but now we are visibly seeing this every day we are being affected uh, by the effect of climate change and the scientists now uh, they are predicting that we are going to have very hot summer this summer so everyone is affected based on because of this uh, climate change now that is the reason uh, the uh, enough measures to the, uh, through sustainable uh, development goals so in this uh, aspect uh, this uh, world earth day celebration is very important because everyone should know what is uh, uh, what is the effect of this uh, uh, climate change what is the uh, how we can contribute so i am happy that uh, there are uh, uh, many volunteers as well as the participants who are uh, all over the uh, india they are uh, participating this uh, uh, event so i just want to uh, share one news maybe the my own students uh, the ma mass communication and electronic media students may not know this 
see if you take the uh, the energy demand or energy uses before uh, the 1920s we were very safe maybe we may we may think that we were not modern before 1920 but but uh, in the in the aspect of earth we were very safe and uh, no pollution but that time the poverty haunted us and the modern absence of modern also haunted us and because of this we were going through the pace like how to use our knowledge how to use our wisdom to uh, develop a new technologies all those things but if you see this during those the technologies where whatever we have developed we were not worrying much about the environment or climate change all those things within the span of 70 80 years or within one uh, uh, century now we are facing the real music whatever we have done for the last 100 years we are facing the uh, real music now the uh, the reason is we have developed a technology for example we take the whatever the coal or petroleum products as you know we are converting energy as per the uh, conservation of energy energy neither be created not be destroyed but we were converting energy from one form of energy into the another form of energy but when we convert energy we were thinking that you know everything is uh, if you take 100 gram of one uh, one part of uh, one type of energy we are converting into another 100 gram it is not so so for example average on average we are converting only 36% approximately if you take 1 kg of uh, coal only 36 uh, gram sorry 36 uh, uh, 360 gram sorry 360 gram we are converting into electricity the rest of the 640 gram is going as a waste this is the our uh, efficiency of converting energy and uh, because of this this 640 grams is going as a waste means it is going as a no2 co2 and so2 or particulate matter all those things really it is uh, uh, changing our uh, climate changing our environment changing our pollution level all those things this is the state even the best uh, tech- we have we are not able to convert 100% uh, energy conversion into electricity so this is one side so the main need of this that is the reason now, nowadays we are talking about green energy conversion green energy uh, uh, creation all those things still in the research level this is one side on the other side whether the nature has not given anything to us that is the question mark we have to understand see nature has given enough resource for the energy but unfortunately we are not able to tap it for example if you take merely solar energy the global energy consumption if you take we need only roughly 173000 terawatts for the for, for our uh, whole uh, world we need only 173000 terawatts of electricity but the if you take the solar energy itself we are getting 10000 times more of energy from solar with only solar energy we can take off all our energy demand whatever electricity we require we can take off this unfortunately we don't have a good technology this is the problem where is the problem it rest with us we are we are we are developing energy which is not 100% conversion of energy as a result there are a lot of uh, the side effects now it is now also it is disturbing our day to day life and uh, mostly uh, this is going to be very uh, some of the cities we may also leave all the city also in few and few uh, uh, decades 
so this is very uh, alarming level so uh, to give awareness about this to discuss about this only this uh, the uh, world earth day celebration is celebrated and uh, the climate change also we are discussing so much there are many policy decisions and then uh, but unfortunately we are in the chain where we cannot uh, come back to the this industrial revolution for example for your uh, information the diesel engine exhaust is the carcinogenic this is world health organization already announced it is diesel engine exhaust is creating carcinogenic for the human beings in the year 2013 or 14 if i am not wrong but still we are not able to come out with this uh, diesel engine still we are traveling in a bus where diesel engines are being used so this is the way we are in the vicious circle we are not able to come out with we started very well in industrial revolution our economy was good our gdp everything is good but now we are uh, tapped we are in a very difficult situation where science are not able to uh, sustain the same type of energy and this is uh, this is one thing the another thing is whatever the energy resource we have coal petrol we do not have the luxury to have it for longer time scientists are predicting that beyond 2070 we may not able to have the petrol we may not able to have the coal whatever we have so then where we are leading so this is these are the problems related to uh, climate change so i am sorry i have to uh, go uh, i would like to be in the among the students and the uh, department also but i have to attend or important meeting in in the chief secretary office that's why i thought i will share some of my views uh, kindly have your time very well and so i beg your pardon so i would like to leave thank you radhika for uh, giving me the opportunity to to give the introduction introductory talk about this thank you one and all thank you thank you thank you so much sir uh, sir is also the dean of the green technology uh, uh, you know school and he's doing a lot of work the whole uh, school is doing a lot of work in green technology so sir we are going to have a recording of this and i will share with you because i am really look you can see i just quickly will introduce you samya rao sukanya saikya rozita singh and Namaskar. his lab here dr varoda sir the uh, rozita singh is the in speaker for today and uh, i can uh, uh, say with great pleasure that i had the opportunity to teach her in delhi university in the journalism department years ago and now she is a change maker global change maker and i'm so happy and proud to uh, have a student who is now leading and teaching people globally so uh, rozita is the keynote speaker and she is invited sukanya samya and vaibhav who are her fellow mates on the antarctica expedition 2022 and they all will talk to us about how they are contributing to mitigating climate change sir we also have with us dr golda she is from the association for promoting sustainability in campuses and communities can you put the camera on her uh, leo please so she is here sir and she uh, and her organization has very generously giving us the cash prize money for the quizzes being organized so that's dr golda here and dr golda is uh, with the apscc and she has been a lot in empowering students and communities in sustainable development so we have a very good group of very motivated and inspiring uh, change makers and i hope that will help our students to learn and take their own journeys forward sir thank you sir for being with us yeah thank you i am uh, i am overwhelmed to see all those uh, people uh, nice to meet you all uh, if time comes i will meet you in person also i will be here up to 4 uh, o'clock after this i may quietly leave please uh, forgive me go ahead please radhika please go thank you sir thank you sir so uh, having done the formal introductions i would invite rozita to start right away so uh, sir, sir can at least little bit you know hear you rozita and your team so and then we'll take on the quiz and everything later on over to you rozita i'm not doing any introductions because it's there on the poster everybody knows who you are thank you 
Sure. Thank you so much. And thanks, uh, Honorable Dean, uh, you know, for your presence today and for the encouraging, uh, you know, very knowledgeable talk that you just uh, gave about the energy perspective and why we are even celebrating Earth Day. And thanks so much, Radhika, ma'am. Uh, it's so nice to see you after so many years virtually. So hopefully in person, we'll see you. And uh, it's great. I must uh, share this with everybody. You know, Radhika, ma'am's energy is same and in I've like grown since, uh, you know, last uh, I, I had the privilege of being taught by her in journalism school in Delhi University back in 2007, 2007 to 2010. And it's amazing, you know, her passion uh, for her students to always put up uh, something very interesting for the students uh, beyond the, you know, typical classroom lectures. So thank you so much for giving us this opportunity, Honorable Dean and uh, Radhika ma'am. And a uh, warm welcome to all of you. Uh, good afternoon. And uh, I'm Rosita Sadika, ma'am, introduced. I'm currently working at United Nations Development Program in the India team. And I'm heading the solutions mapping role in the Accelerator Lab. And we are basically looking at, you know, innovations for sustainable development goals. And I'm also joined, uh, you know, by my uh, fellow teammates who were with me in the Climate Force Antarctica expedition. So today we will take you through a little bit of a glimpse of you know, what we saw there, uh, but also what were our key learnings. And we really uh, have this endeavor uh, ever since we've made this journey. This journey was started in uh, last March, so exactly almost one year ago. And uh, we have our learnings. We've been speaking to student communities, uh, to uh, the places where we have graduated from, to the cities where we belong from. And we've been actually trying to get the messages, the key messages of what we saw and learned there across to as many people as possible. So uh, uh, first of all, thank you for being here and for listening to us. How we'll do this is uh, we have a presentation for you. We want to take you through certain visuals, certain um, you know important lessons that we learn. We also have a very interesting video. So I will uh, request to play it at a certain point. Um, that will give you a very nice glimpse of the journey. And then we also want to end with a very strong call to action. We have something that for all of you today uh, that you can start implementing uh, from today onwards. And um, so I'll just start. I'll just request uh, Sukanya if you can share your screen. So meanwhile, uh, so Kanya is just presentation. Yeah, Rosita, can uh, just let me know when you see. Can you see it? You can, can you see, see the PPT. Yeah, yeah, we can see it. You can make it full screen. Yeah. All right. So um, just to start off, you know, you might be wondering um, what were these group of people doing in Antarctica? Why did they go there, and why are we speaking about it today? Um, so I mean, Earth Day happens to be, if you if you uh, if you recall, or just to share with you, the first Earth Day actually was celebrated in 1970. So very interestingly, you know, even five decades later, uh, there is a, such an important need uh, to kind of commemorate a day. Um, we always say as sustainable development practitioners working in this field that every day is Earth Day. Every day should be for conservation, but it's very special for us that you know a day has been. Uh, so, you know, on this occasion, of course, we want to bring you this story. Uh, so, Sukanna, if you can move to the next slide. So, today we want to, of course, share with you um, Antarctica through our eyes. Um, next slide. So, uh, although, you know, Radhika ma'am has introduced me as a keynote speaker, it was very important for me to do this as a joint presentation because I was not alone in this journey. So this sustainability expedition that took place in March 2022 actually had 150 people on board. So there were 150 sustainability champions, uh, enthusiasts uh, from all walks of life from 35 countries who actually participated in this expedition. And therefore, it's very important wherever we go, we actually kind of speak together because there's so many different perspectives. We all come from different sectors and we want to do the storytelling together. So I'm very happy to, you know, share the stage with Sukanya Vaibhavan Soumya today. 
So this is our picture, if, um, uh, just to uh, show you or tell you a little bit of an anecdote also whenever we show you some pictures. So this was a very special moment for us. Uh, on uh, We were on uh, the deck of the ship uh, with the Indian flag, uh, right? And we actually sang our national anthem. We were the only country from the entire contingent of 20, 35 countries that sang our national anthem while being on board. And there were five, uh, you know, Indian members in the contingent all coming from different walks of life. Uh, so this is something that was uh, we had clicked during our Antarctica expedition. If you go to the next slide. And like I said, you know, it's important for me to also, you know, kind of share the stage and have a joint storytelling session. So with me, uh, you will see that, uh, you know, very soon you'll be hearing from Sukanya. Sukanya, just a quick intro. She uh, just completed her PhD. She's based in Ireland and actually she's been investigating the impacts of climate change and urbanization on wastewater infrastructure. Um, we have with us also Soumya. Soumya is an MBA graduate in business design and innovation and she's currently working at Zebia IT Architects. And as a student of design thinking, she's actually conducted multiple workshops for rural school children in design thinking and sustainability. And then we have with us Weber. Weber is a circular economy professional working in the field of plastic waste management. As you know, a very important uh, you know, problem of today's time, the growing menace of plastic waste with an organization called Taro Sambhav. So he's based in Delhi. He's working with this organization and he has a PG diploma in entrepreneurial leadership in Europa Fellowship in Ladakh. So why I'm also telling you about these introductions is you will appreciate we all come from very different background. Uh, and this was the story of all of us, all the 150 people, different sectors, different disciplines coming together for Climate Force Antarctica. And what is Climate Force Antarctica? If we see the next slide, please. So this is um, kind of a mission started by a foundation called 2041 Foundation on your screen. Uh, some of you might recognize uh, maybe some mountaineering or, uh, you know, trekking um, enthusiasts here. Uh, this is a photo of Sir Robert Swan. He's the one who led our expedition. So we were very fortunate to join him. He was the first person on Earth to walk both North Pole and South Pole. And he started this foundation already more than a decade back to basically spread awareness about the Antarctica Treaty. So there is currently a treaty that protects Antarctica as a region, right? It's the fifth largest continent, belongs to no country. It stands for peace. It stands for research, stands for sustainability. And it has a very fragile wildlife and ecosystem, which needs to be preserved. So for the continuation of the preservation of this treaty, he has been propagating uh, and he has been holding a educational sustainability expedition Every year, so every year he selects 100 to 150 sustainability champions we were fortunate to have made through the selection process uh, to be on board this expedition. And what happens here is we embark on a 12 day, uh, very unique educational journey, also a carbon negative expedition. We'll talk about that in a bit in a bit. And it has a blend of, say, NGOs, sustainability professionals, business leaders from the corporate world, government officials, students joining us. And um, the idea is that all these 150 participants each year, when they go back to their home after completing this leadership on the edge, uh, you know, sustainability certification program, they are able to share this lesson. They're able to practice and embed sustainability in society. So it's a very focused mission. Um, it's not just, you know, a trip to Antarctica. It's basically about observing the impacts of climate change, learning what has uh, what is being, uh, you know, done there or uh, what are the kind of observable things we see in the wildlife that are being changed due to our human activities. So that's the key or crux of this whole 2041 Foundation. And you will shortly be seeing certain details also in the video that we will be playing. Next slide, please. So like I said, uh, it was a huge contingent, right? And um, uh, some of the visuals on your screen, we'll keep bringing you back these visuals because you can imagine it's, it's literally like the last wilderness on Earth a very special uh, Antarctica wildlife that resides there, uh, huge icebergs, right? And we'll be talking about why these icebergs are important and what is happening due to climate change to them. Next slide. 
Um, and very interesting uh, trivia or anecdote to share with all of you. Um, all of us completed this journey in, uh, you know, in the middle of uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. And you will not believe this. Uh, every year, uh, Robert Swan, since he started the 2041 Foundation, he has taken people for this expedition. Except you can imagine, you can guess the years 2020 and 2021. Because of the pandemic, he could not uh, take the people. So actually, some of us, uh, many of us were waiting for this expedition since more than two years. Uh, someone like me was actually waiting for this expedition since over 10 years because I got selected for this in 2013, to, uh, to be honest. But at that time, you know, I did not have the resources or the network uh, to really gather the funds to go through it. So all of us who are selected for it actually go through a very rigorous uh, campaigning crowdfunding campaigning or we raise sponsorship through corporates to support the cost right so for me this was a dream of a decade which finally did uh, get fulfilled in a very strange when the world and you won't imagine when we were there just before coming we had to follow a lot of strict uh, covid-19 protocols bubble arrangement a lot of sacrifices on our and several date changes uh, the expedition went through. I think six date, six times the date was changed. And every day we used to have a COVID test. Because, because why? Because while you're on land, it's still manageable. Once you're on board the ship, if there is an outbreak, it can be very serious, especially for the crew who has been on board since several months and not seen their family. So we actually went through 10 COVID tests. And happy to tell you, we were perhaps the only ship in the season so Antarctica season is November to March. We were the only ship in the season uh, that had COVID cases on board. So that's something that was, again, a very interesting team effort uh, uh, that was done by everybody. Uh, next slide. So just before playing the video, we wanted to tell you a little bit about the Antarctica Treaty. Um, so like I mentioned, uh, this is something very important. And imagine even after working in environment sustainability since a decade, I was not aware about this before I took this expedition. So there are actually, uh, you know, uh, it started with 12 countries signing the treaty uh, on um, 1959, as long as back as 1959. And this actually covers the entire continent, which means, you know, nobody can claim uh, authority or, uh, you know, no country can claim uh, ownership over this continent. This continent is preserved for scientific research. Many of you might be aware India also has a station in the Antarctica research base with a couple of other countries, and they conduct a very important, uh, you know, glaciology um, uh, studies and studies related to which are very relevant uh, for us, uh, even for the climate change field. And um, in 2015, four nations have signed the treaty. And I think if we speak about the current times, uh, most of the countries, many of the countries have signed the treaty. Now, what happens next is, uh, if you look at what the treaty really is all about, it actually, um, and you will probably all recognize as media students and you know, the kind of world that we are living in uh, with uh, Russia, uh, you know, in the war with Ukraine. Uh, so this continent is protected from any military use, right? Uh, there is The treaty has around 10 or 11 points, and these points are listed here. So the key points here is no military use is permitted. There is, has to be free exchange of scientific plans and data right no territorial claims can be put it's a nuclear free zone very important to cite right and it applies to land uh, and also uh, there are also some national laws that applies to uh, citizens working there but besides the fact i think the most important part here is that this treaty actually is expiring in 2048 so till now it has a job of conserving this special uh, you know continent from any kind of human uh, drilling activities or anthropogenic activities that causes climate change or causes harm to the environment. But this treaty is actually due to expire in 2048. <clears throat> and while you may feel that this is really ahead in the future, it's not. It's really coming fast. And there are so many agendas and policies uh, that countries lay focus on. Antarctica Treaty is nowhere in the list of priority for many of the countries. So this will become open for negotiation in 2041. That's why the name 2041 Foundation. Until that time, we need to have a solid of negotiators, uh, lobbyists, right, who can actually propagate for this 
at different countries through different levels uh, at their own way uh, to preserve this treaty. So this is the reason why this ambassadorship program has even been made, because if you think about it, say 20 years down the line, 100 uh, people every year if they go, it's only 2,200 people who are speaking about this treaty in a world of 8 billion. So if you would appreciate here, this is a very also very uh, strategically thought out program. Um, very importantly, because in the world where there are, I think, millions and millions of like documents and thousands of policies and treaties, this treaty sometimes gets, uh, you know, it's not that visible. People don't understand the importance, but we have to continue to preserve this continent. And we will tell you shortly after this video why this continent is so special and why the wildlife needs to be protected, why the glaciers need to be protected. So at this point, I would uh, request Radhika ma'am if you can play the 11 minute video for the audience out there and then we'll see you back here in 11 minutes. We'll just go uh, on mute and we'll be back with the presentation. Yeah, sure. We will share the, we'll present the video. I mean, it's offline what you sent me, but we will share it on Google Meet. Sure. Mute. No, no, we, we want to share it on screen. So everybody who's uh, from other parts of the country, they will also see it. It'll be like a presentation. We share the presentation because, Rajita, we do have people who've joined us from other parts of the country. They can also see the film. Uh, uh, and the students who are here, of course, they will see it in the classroom. Sure. Meanwhile, I just wanted to tell the students and those joining us online, you know, throughout this presentation, um, um, because it's a slightly longer presentation, right? But we do want to, we have kept a good time for dialogue with you later on. So if you have any questions, please do keep noting it down. We would love to like hear them out and also have a dialogue with you. We can't hear the audio yet. Ma'am, if I may suggest something, what we can also do is because sometimes, you know, streaming actually creates an issue. That's why I shared the, uh, you know, offline file with you. You can play the video there and disconnect the audio from us. I will play it for the online audience if that works. Because I just want to give them a good experience. The one who are joining physically, they might uh, see a very slow streaming. So you can play it there and we can come back here. I will play it. You can disconnect from the room and I will play it for okay. the audience. So, so what we do is we so then you what you're saying is basically we we will disconnect from google meet yeah you can disconnect play it for the audience there i will continue here with the people who are okay. joining online and so I, will I, suggest, I suggest you start off rosita and then okay. once yours is taken off and people are saying it's fine okay. then we'll minimize that put on mute and we'll play it offline yeah. okay great great share sure, it then. sure okay so share
So once you disconnect, I think I can start playing. I'm ready. Just unmute me, Rosita. You can start the presentation. You can share and present it. And Rosita, are you there? Yeah. yeah. So you shall I share the video or shall I? So, so you sh you'll share it as a presentation, right? I mean, you will share it. Uh, Okay, let me do that. Okay, got it. Yeah, I'll just do that. So we are ready. The moment you start, then we will uh, go offline. Oh, and we will... Okay, okay, sure. Got it, got it. I'll do just that. Make sure that everybody has access. So we're not sure. trying to reach out to each other. Yeah. Okay, sure. I'll do that. Yeah. So, Amir, uh, just let me know one of you when you hear the online audience because I won't be able to see my screen. I will quickly wait a second. Uh... I need to share my audio also. Uh, so, so Kanye, let me know when you can hear the video also. Sure. Can you see? Yes. Can you hear also? Yeah, yeah, we can okay, hear. Okay, perfect. Then I'm playing it. Well, here we go at the hotel. People are arriving. It's snowing and huge excitement. Game on. <laughs> Antarctica! Antarctica! our Antarctic circle. We've got a speaking staff and we're handing that around and just hearing from everybody about where they'll come from, what's important to them and what they want to get out of the expedition. the real ice is. 25 years ago when I first came, there was ice literally where you stopped and that's all retreating. So this is really one of your first signs on the expedition of climate change. Right now we're at the beach just cleaning up trash, plastic, naturally microplastic as well, which is called ocean-bound plastic. From what I learned from the uh, talk earlier, I think it's a good start to start from the beach and prevent it to just go into the ocean before it's too late. So around 10 million tons of rubbish is hitting our oceans every year, and I'm confident we're going to be cleaning up at least half a ton of rubbish. I'm super happy to be here and just leave this beautiful environment better than it was when we came down. Well, here we are. 
on the dockside in Ushuaia, ready to go down the Beagle Channel and then head south across the Great Passage to the Antarctic. Lots of enthusiasm, lots of excitement, but at this moment, I think people are looking back and saying, wow, we got here. All that work, all that sponsorship raising, everything has really come to this moment. We all are so happy to be on board after all this time waiting for this trip. It feels like a dream. We're just so excited for the next stage. Said goodbye to two years of preparation, all of the madness of the real world. We're heading off into the Drake. Cape Horn behind us. So happy to be here with an amazing expedition team. It's an extraordinary place and a huge privilege. And going across the Drake Passage really is a rite of passage to get to Antarctica. Yes, you can fly, but this is the real deal. So let's punch south. I think I could cry. <laughs> We're here. <laughs> and it's beautiful. I feel small and at the same time so grateful to be here and to see firsthand what is happening to it because of our action. too cloudy earlier and now out of nowhere this view came up so it's 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 very unpredictable but it's that's what Antarctica is all about right it's it's unpredictable it's beautiful and it's mind-blowing small when you're looking up at these cliffs that are 3,000 feet you're just this tiny little speck inside this great great big expanse but it also makes you feel a sense of awe and wonder knowing that there's so much more to this world than what we see or experience in our day-to-day -day lives
what this expedition is all about is giving young people, all of us, the chance to talk about action, to talk about solutions and actually go back home and make the change. So back home, it's quite warm, populated. You have noises from the cars, noises from the people. Here it's predominantly peaceful and quiet. But the only noise is for the animals. It's just so pristine. And it's such an outer worldly spiritual experience that really connects you to what it means to be a human being, to what it means to be living on Earth. We are here at Deception Island. I think it's important that we realize what we're capable of doing. Way back in the 1850s through the 1930s, we were down here slaughtering whales, seals. And here is an example of what could happen in the future. This is the place that we came and conquered as, a, as human beings. This is the place where we took hundreds of thousands, if not millions of, of lives. Antarctica means for me international cooperation and that's what we need today in order to cope with climate change. So it's hope. Antarctica means hope. Genuinely it just feels like one's in a magical world so far from the one back home. Everybody at this stage of the expedition is a little bit sad because it's coming to the end. But look, we've come to Antarctica. We've taken so much in inspiration from the continent, inspiration from each other. And this is not the end of the expedition. This is the beginning of the expedition. Go home and become champions and ambassadors to show future generations that we actually care. Rasita, yeah, we've had the screening here. Yeah, same. We just completed it. <laughs> yeah, so now we can continue. Sure. Your, you and your team. Yeah, please. Yeah. Um, so hoping everybody enjoyed. We really wanted to give you a good experience of watching it. So it was while streaming, it uh, kind of slows down. And uh, this was just a trailer for you. Actually, this was a shortened version. 11 minutes is actually a slightly larger version that you can see online on YouTube. We'd be happy to share but this was the key portions that we wanted to show you uh this is the closest we can show you the you know our experience and through our eyes what we saw mm -hmm. and now without uh, further ado i will invite now sukanya to please uh, you know come on board and uh, take us through uh, you know uh, from you know your viewpoints your observations but also a little bit more scientific understanding on you know what is happening with respect to climate change in Antarctica. So over to you and let me know if you want to uh, me to share the screen. Okay, uh, whatever is convenient, Rosita, I can also share my screen. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to uh, share my perspective about my journey to Antarctica. And uh, I would not delay any further, I'll just share my screen first, just a sec. Let me know if it's visible, Rosita. It's yes, visible. visible. Yeah, it's okay. visible. Okay, sure. Okay, uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, I have watched the video personally probably a gazillion times and it still gives me goosebumps. So uh, it was just a glimpse of uh, what we saw. So while we were there, uh, there were around 10 landing sites. Uh, 
that we got to uh, go to in antarctica but there is a rule uh, sorry there is a rule in antarctica that uh, not more than 100 people can uh, be on land at the same time and this is absolutely essential uh to protect the wildlife to not disturb them and uh, this this rule has been kept in mind along with other rules we have been extremely respectful of uh, whatever we were asked for and uh, that's why because it was a big team uh, since rosita said we couldn't uh, the uh, the team members couldn't be there in the expedition for two consecutive years so it was a big team this time and so uh, it was divided into two groups so uh the while one group was on land the other group would do activities on board which would include seminars workshops breakout sessions you know discussions so uh, this would uh, uh, like change when the other group was uh, come back from land uh, they come on board the other group goes on shore so this was happening on a daily basis and on some days we would even have like two uh, two landings so uh, one of them was the brown base research station uh, which is an argentinian research base station uh, we were fortunate enough to visit there but unfortunately because we were uh, we went there towards the end of the antarctic season as rosita mentioned it's uh, until march and we went in march mid of march so uh, already some of the stations were closed and not many it was not fully operating so uh, we couldn't uh, like see their operations uh, uh, in the scientific uh, station but uh, never went there it was a great experience so these are some of the landing sites now uh, me being a phd uh, researcher and uh, i always look into the climate change impact side and the science behind climate change i would like to just briefly discuss uh, how is the climate changing in a very uh, basic terms and is it impacting antarctica so uh, firstly uh, i'm sure you may, must have heard about greenhouse gases and if not uh, those are uh, gases in the atmosphere that helps to uh, trap heat in our environment uh, in basic term so greenhouse gas is that but these gases are emitted through uh, natural phenomena like volcanic eruptions but they are also emitted in a much more exponential way through human you know anthropogenic activities uh, and initially when uh, dean sir uh, he mentioned about the industrial revolution so before that uh, greenhouse gas was emitted in a much more balanced way Uh, so a little bit of greenhouse gas effect is a good thing because it helps to trap heat and without which we will be all frozen to death uh, so it is important but because of our uh, you know activities and lot of fossil fuel use and uh, vehicles and food waste and a lot other things we have thrown this balance uh, thrown this balance out and uh, now Uh, extremely uh, you know we, a lot of, uh, more and more heat is being uh, trapped inside our environment and as more and more heat is being trapped our earth is becoming warmer which means that our, our air is also becoming warmer so with the air becoming warmer uh, it holds more water vapor in the air as a result what happens there are more extreme events like you know rainfall storm events cyclones hurricanes and this might in in one part of the world but the other part of the world might suffer from droughts now uh, generally when we associate climate change impacts we all think about global warming but this is just one effect of the cause there are other effects like cold snaps you know uh, just recently in april there was a cold snap event in toronto in canada which uh, which is april is supposed to be a spring month but uh, it killed all the uh, flowers and all the uh, you know um, different plants that come up in spring because it's not supposed to snow in april but it is happening so all these different events erratic events are effects of climate change it is not just global warming this has to be kept in mind and uh, we have recently seen heat stroke events even in india people dying of heat stroke so uh, this year is going to be an el nino year which is also a climate change impact so what is el nino is that in the pacific ocean in the eastern and central part of the pacific ocean the uh, te ocean temperature the surface temperature of the ocean is becoming unusually warm so more uh, greater than average so what is happening is that it's 
leading to different events. But in India, what is happening, it would lead to a lot of drought events. So 2023 is going to be a drought year for India. So these are all uh, climate change uh, impacts. But what exactly is happening in Antarctica is that due to the ocean getting warmer, the ice sheet in Antarctica is melting. Now, there is a, a huge difference between the ice sheet in Antarctica and the ice sheet in Arctic region. Ice sheet in Antarctica is ice on land, which means that if it melts, it would lead to rise in sea level. This is as opposed to uh, ice sheet in Arctic region, which is ice on sea. That is sea ice. So sea ice, if it melts, it wouldn't lead to rise in sea level. It's obviously both are bad, but it wouldn't lead to rise in sea level. Whereas uh, ice melting in Antarctica is very detrimental to uh, all to the coastal communities all over the world. So uh, what is happening is that along with it, because ocean is getting warmer, sea ice is reducing. So what is happening is that ice is white in color. So it reflects a lot of sunlight. So in the absence of ice, sea ice, more and more heat is being absorbed by the ocean, and which is why oceans are, be, uh, you know, becoming warmer. So this is like a vicious loop. It's, you know, feeding in oceans getting warmer again, and then again leading to ice sheet melting. So it's a vicious circle. Now, if we look very closely uh, into an Antarctic, a cross section of an Antarctic ice sheet, now this is an Antarctic ice sheet, uh, and left the left hand uh, left hand side is the Western Antarctic region, and the right hand side is the Eastern Antarctic region. Now uh, these two uh, are, although both are facing the threat of climate change, the Western Antarctic region is considered the most vital piece of ice on Earth uh, by scientists uh, due to the effects of climate change because. Uh, the ice in the Western Antarctic region is already below sea level. So because of the oceans getting warmer, the, I, the ice is melting at a much faster rate as compared to the Eastern Antarctic region. Now, if we look into a particular glacier called the Twaits Glacier, and that is in the West Antarctic region uh, where we went. Uh, so the Twaits Glacier is called uh, the Doomsday Glacier by uh, scientists, and it's rightly called so. Uh, because what's happening in the Twaits Glacier is that uh, in the last few years, since 1992, uh, this contact point between the bedrock and the Twaits Glacier, which is, you know, uh, the which is holding the ice in the bedrock, this contact point is actually moving backwards. So it has already traveled 14 kilometers since 1992, which means that the uh, glacier is melting and breaking away from the bedrock at a much faster pace. And it has already contributed to 4% rise in sea level. And if the whole glacier melts, it would lead to a 0 0.5 meter rise in sea level, which essentially means, means that even coastal communities in India would be affected. Uh, so uh, it is not very known to people. Uh, not many people know about it. And that's why reporting of such uh, events is uh, extremely crucial. Uh, uh, to to bring in the urgency of the situation. Uh, other observations that we made uh, while we were there, so our uh, expedition started on March 16th. On March 18th, uh, on the Eastern Antarctic region, the Concordia Research Station recorded temperature 40 degrees centigrade warmer than average. Now, that is extremely harmful for a uh, fragile ecosystem, uh, ecosystem like Antarctica because uh, even a one to degree difference in temperature uh, gets us sweating and we get so restless and we get heat strokes. But in a uh, ecosystem like Antarctica, we use such frozen temperatures, a 40 degree uh, centigrade warmer than average would mean uh, uh, a lot of detrimental effect on the wildlife and the entire ecosystem. So that was recorded on March 18th. And the Glenzer Conga Glacier, which is in the Eastern Antarctic region, collapsed while we were there on March 21st. But we were not in the Eastern Antarctic region. Uh, thankfully, we were in the Western Antarctic region. But this is very surprising to the scientific community because they believe that the Eastern Antarctic region is quite stable, as I explained before, as compared to the Western Antarctic region. Uh, the fact that it is happening now in the Eastern uh, Antarctic region is extremely alarming. Uh, apart from that, Antarctic is basically a cold desert. Now, if we see ice, we might not think about desert, but it is a cold desert. 
and uh, it has not received uh, rainfall for more than a million years and but that pattern is like changing currently due to climate change while we were there we observed a lot of rainfall events which is not good for the wildlife there it's it's even fatal to the penguin chicks uh, so uh, we observed a lot of rainfall events there uh, apart from that uh, as i said sea ice concentration is reducing which is impacting seals which are very dependent on sea ice they rest on sea ice they hunt from sea ice so it is very important to have a balance of sea ice concentration which is uh, reducing currently due to climate change uh, now talking about antarctic life, wildlife we have uh, you know a uh, seen a lot of uh, different wildlife uh, there obviously as you can think of you know penguins we saw three different varieties of penguins predominantly gentoo penguins uh, we saw leopard seals crab eater seals uh, weddell seals uh, different kinds of birds and also humpback whales unfortunately we didn't see orcas which generally uh, are seen before it was seen but now uh, because of climate change the oceans are getting warmer and whole whales are you know uh, migrating further south uh, now when we think about antarctica we think about penguins and uh, seals but we do not think about this small creature called creel uh, this is something new that i learned uh, when i uh, went for the expedition uh, although i am in this field uh, scientific field of climate change i never knew about creel so creel is the basic building block of the antarctic food web food web uh what is this this is a small it looks like a prawn it's a small uh, crustacean but all the bigger uh, wild birds even the whales uh, you know other fishes penguins they all are uh, feeding on krill but due to climate change uh, now krills require require a certain ambient temperature to survive but again due to climate change and oceans getting warmer the it is affecting the population of krills they are depleting and on top of that human beings as greedy as we are we have uh, found out i i don't know how true it is but uh, they they the human beings like scientists some scientists think that krill oil is uh, very uh, beneficial sadly for human health so we you can get Uh, krill oil capsules nowadays in the market which is really sad so uh, because of that as well the krill uh, krill concentration in antarctica is uh, depleting and that would mean that the whole antarctic ecosystem would collapse without uh, krill so that is extremely essential for everyone to know and to understand how uh, this small an organism uh, can decide the fate of the entire continent um uh, now these are some of the uh, reports like uh, that you know uh, showed showcase the impacts of climate change in antarctica as i said we uh, predominantly saw gentoo penguins who can survive on anything uh, not just on krill as opposed to other penguins which can only survive on krill so we saw gentoo penguins where we went because they they are they are increasing increasing in population significantly because they can eat anything and everything um but the other penguins are getting affected and they are moving further south and they are even dying because of uh, lack of krill uh it's also affecting seals as i said and whales as i said that it's migrating far south so uh this is the power of uh, because you guys are journalism students uh, i i think it is very essential to report climate events uh, you know to make people aware of the urgency of the situation because antarctica is very far away from us so it's far from sight far far from mind so people in india would think about it or even anywhere else in the in the world they wouldn't essentially think about antarctica but your action uh even sitting there in india would impact uh, the wildlife and the ecosystem in antarctica and vice versa because antarctic climate decides the climate of the whole world so it is absolutely important to understand the intricacies and the link between us and the far away land of antarctica so uh again power of pen you know power of uh, uh positive journalism climate reporting uh that brought about positive changes in the past have uh, have are bringing positive changes now in the present so uh because of people getting aware people are coming together joining hands with organization to you know sign campaigns uh, petitions and to uh, you know now 
we can protect there are a lot of maritime areas that are protected there is a ban on heavy fuel vessels and we can slowly seal recovering whale populations as well and that's the power of uh, you know climate reporting so with that i would like to pass it on to vabhav just uh, so i hope you enjoy one more slide is there if you just come oh, really then uh just before that sorry if you just uh, stop presenting i'll just do that i'll just add it one thing okay sure sure just share that yeah thanks so much um, so can you you really you know presented uh, well and uh, in a very simple way actually a very complicated you know problem as well so just wanted to show one more thing here because considering there are media students and you know as sukanya very rightly say said that it's very important that we understand the science of climate change so i'm sure like you would be hearing sukanya talking about uh, and she really simplified it beautifully uh, some people get like uh, really technical as well but it's very important to understand the science as media students and because later future in the future world when you're all graduating when you're actually practicing journalism it is it will be so important to actually communicate this uh, in a simplified way but also in an impactful urgent way to say policy makers uh, to practitioners uh, to the citizens reading it so on your screen what we wanted to show you was when we came back we had the choice and we had the kind of like uh, we were thinking how do we tell our story so we actually had a very interesting exercise and we were speaking to certain media houses certain journalists approached us and we really picked up uh, i would say few to tell our story because not everybody was looking at it unfortunately from the scientific angle or from the climate change angle they were looking at it probably, probably from the tourism angle and we were very careful and conscious uh not to, to give our story to those journalists because we thought that it's important that we get the messaging right so all of us uh, very consciously uh, you know worked on the messaging and uh, these articles which we will be happy to share with you are something that they have done really justice so uh, there is of course good journalism still in the world so we had an article published in uh, science the wire a uh, news uh, agency website and also news 18 and uh, these two reporters uh, especially athira if you speak uh, you know look at the work of athira from science of wire she has been reporting on science journalism environment journalism in a, in a very beautiful manner so it really inspired us but it was so important for us to find those journalists to find those people who could tell our story in the correct way so we found these two uh, kind of outlets media outlets but you'll be surprised like there were so many of these famous outlets or Uh, many other places they just chose not to give our story just because they were not looking at it from the right angle so just wanted to kind of highlight that given that you know we have media students here and our appeal always as uh, people working in sustainability is please do give it some time uh, understand the science behind it it is not difficult in today's world actually we have amazing visual reports uh, summary reports uh, some of you might have heard about ipcc intergovernmental panel on climate change who publish these huge scientific reports and each year there is a climate change conference uh, held where negotiators come from all across the world uh, ipcc actually incidentally won the nobel prize in 2007 right uh, that's when radhika ma'am we were uh, in our journalism first first year right the climate change talk it had just come up now if you look at it the reports have become so easy to understand there is a summary for policy makers summary even for uh, young people or even children school children to read so we do appeal that you know since you guys are also studying uh, you know journalism you will be uh, practicing it perhaps in the near future it's very important to do that so just wanted to highlight that and now of course i want to bring uh, webhav uh, and uh, webhav and somya together will also take us through some of the solutions like a little bit of a more thinking on what we can do together and certain call for action so over to webhav thank you rozita hi everyone a very good afternoon so i'll just quickly share my screen yeah i hope it is visible Yes. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. So, uh, a very good afternoon, everyone. So, I'll just take you back to the expedition 
on how what we felt during the journey and how the organizers look at this expedition from the sustainability point of view so one of the thing that came into our mind was when we were going to the expedition like rosita also mentioned that uh, there is a lot of doubt that we will be also generating a lot of carbon footprints and there will be lots of uh, emissions uh, during the journey but one thing which we were really proud that the organizers uh, took uh, was the journey uh, in the ship that we were undertaking the name of the ship was ocean victory that ship was uh, one of the most in the industry which consumed 60% less in energy than the other ships uh, which goes to antarctica so this was a big relief for us personally because we were going to antarctica talking about climate change and we were going in one of the most sustainable ships in the industries and then when uh, the organizers also told us about the uh, carbon uh, carbon dioxide usage uh, so this slide gives you an overview about how much co2 was emitted uh, during the expedition so if you look at the fuel uh, expedition uh, ship fuel around 23800 us gallons of marine gas gas oil was used uh, to walk across the uh, to go across the antarctic region which was equivalent to 250 tons of co2 and then also like you saw in the video there were small zodiac boats that were also used so 125 us gallons of uh, gasoline was also used for that which was equivalent to 2 tons of co2 so the total uh, uh, carbon dioxide use uh, emissions from this were 252 tons and if we divide it between 175 people including the staff that was uh, boarded on the ship it comes to 1.45 uh, tons of carbon dioxide per person so this was the carbon emission that was calculated by the expedition team and like we talked about it earlier as well that uh this was a carbon negative expedition uh just a second Sorry, i'm just facing some technical issue should i share my screen web of i can do that yeah if you can i'll i'll just do that quickly no worries yeah i'm just facing some issue or is it visible now okay yeah perfect so yeah like we talked about that this is a carbon negative expedition so after uh, like there were 252 metric tons of co2 that was uh, released but the organizers were proactive in ensuring that we uh, ensure that we offset more carbon uh, emissions uh, than we generated so the organizers uh, invested in projects uh, like mentioned here like we uh, they organized uh, they offsetted in projects in amazon rainforest there were some projects in china there were some projects in australia so in total the to, uh, total carbon di uh, carbon dioxide offset was uh, equivalent to 513 metric ton which makes it a carbon negative journey so this was a diversified portfolio of uh, investments that was done by the organizers in the field of forest restoration direct carbon capture clean energy projects next slide so yeah, like in the video there were some uh, scenarios from one of the very stark places that we saw at one point of time we were looking at the beautiful mountains covered with ice but at the same time there was this one place called as deception island where we went and it was a completely stark contrast for us because this was a place where the dark history of antarctica was shown to us because in 18 between 1850s to 1930s a lot of uh, uh, extraction of oil was happening here and the whales were killed in at, at this island and this is a volcanic island uh, if you can see here it's a very different uh, topography here so whales were uh, killed and then they were uh, uh, like uh, put into these boilers to extract oil so that uh, they were uh, it was used for lighting the lamps basically in countries like uh, london paris and new york so a lot of these things were happening uh, at that time 
but all of these came to a standstill when uh, Thomas Edison invented uh, electricity. So these activities were stopped. But this gives us an idea about how uh, there were things that are happening in Antarctica. And this was primarily because before the Antarctic Treaty came into the picture. So this is the uh, role that Antarctic Treaty plays in ensuring that these kind of exploitation in again, and at the same time, we are able to protect this beautiful uh, continent that we have called as Antarctica. Next slide. Now that we have also discussed about the problems that we as a human race has uh, brought to Antarctica and to this world in general, there is there are solutions, and we we can like be the part of the solutions. We are the only ones who can promote these solutions as well. Next slide. So as students of journalism, I feel that your role will be huge in fighting uh, climate change and working towards climate mitigation. And uh, as journalist, uh, journalism students, I, uh, I would say that climate reporting is very important. May, uh, ensuring that climate news is going to the mainstream masses and at the same time people are understanding uh, it in a very easy way. Like Rosetta also mentioned that IPCC reports from the time it was established earlier to now, there are very summarized version that, versions that are being released. But now, in as a form of climate reporting, this needs to go to even uh, remote parts of the countries as well. And at the same time, uh, the narrative of uh, climate change needs to be at the political and social level as well, like using the media's voice to bring that accountability and bringing that knowledge at a political level is very important. And at the same time, bringing that to the citizens of the country so that they consider climate policies while making while giving their votes. So this becomes a very important part that you as journalists can take and drive to the masses. So I would definitely recommend that please read more about it, uh, talk more about it, and share more stories around these things so that uh, when you share these stories, it will bring a change in the mindset of people and it will create changes, certain uh, fundamental shifts at political and social level. Next slide. Now, there are certain actions that we as individuals can also take. Uh, so, and at the same time, there are changes at the business level. And uh, so we are actually, uh, we would actually like to divide these individual actions at in the form of lifestyle changes, uh, in the form of education, and at the same time in the form of business. So my uh, friend Soumya will take you through all the actions that you can uh, take as individuals as well. So yeah, over to you, Soumya. Thanks, Vabo. And would you be okay with continuing the presentation? We'll just go by the slide, or you want me to present? Yeah, yeah continue. I, I can. I can okay. So I think just uh, Soma before handing over. So what uh, Weber was mentioning about previously about you know uh, these categories. Uh, so we are happy to share that with you. But uh, we've just organized it in terms of lifestyle, business, and education. Soma will be uh, doing a deep dive, uh, looking at say one sector, so education to begin with, and then we'll be talking about the rest. But these are basically very simple actions that can be followed in the daily life. So over to Soma. Thank you, Rosita, and. Again, very glad to be here. Uh, thank you for coming here and having me over. And okay, sorry, I'll just. <laughs> There's a, another. I will not stay quiet, so please bear with me as I join my baby here as well. Okay, so as first of all, uh, as we came back from Antarctica, we just realized how we were supposed to be and how we were supposed to travel. Uh, when we went out. So I will broadly just categorize, uh, Prasit, if you could just go back one more slide to the pre, to the three uh, topics that Fabo had just shown. Yeah, yeah. So in my opinion, personally, uh, every, when, it, when we talk about actions, everything goes back to education. I think that's the root cause of how we start. 
Of course, this can be broadly categorized into these three lifestyle, education and business. But in my personal opinion, the moment we start educating ourselves, we start from there. So education can broadly be categorized into two. Uh, if we can move to the education slide. We'll start from there. The next slide, please. The next slide. Yeah. So as you can see, broadly, education can be classified into two, a core and periphery. Core is what Radhika Ma'am is doing, uh, you know, going back to schools, going back to colleges and, you know, talking to a larger audience, talking to a network of people uh, and therefore creating a much bigger impact because then you can propagate it in a stronger manner. But of course, there's a periphery where it starts with the individual. All of you being students have taken the first step because you chose to be here. You chose to listen uh, about what's happening in Antarctica. You chose to you know, educate yourself. And that's the very first beginning or being aware. So and core is where uh, when we as Antarctica, when we came back, we that's where we are also starting. We are trying to educate everybody about what is happening out there. And in periphery, you know, you can do multiple things as media graduates. You can read about the latest reports, what is happening. You can be updated on local actions. And of course, going back to those three broader categories of lifestyle. Lifestyle, as we all understand, can be broadly categorized into three. One is your conscious consumption. Where is your money going? How are you consuming your products? Now is the time, you know, in a way when we are talking about fast fashion, uh, one thing we must understand as individual is everything that you buy, even though it says recyclable, everything that you buy is cannot be recycled. The only way to reduce consumption, only way to reduce waste is conscious consumption. Even though they say that plastic is banned and you buy a paper bag or a cloth bag instead, it is still not sustainable because it's still a new product in this in this planet. So the only way to be sustainable in that era, in that in that manner, is bringing your own bag. That is how you can be, you can educate yourself for how to be sustainable. Second, spark a dialogue. How do you go back? When you can, as media professionals, you can go back, write write about, create awareness about how it is going. Talking to children, your communities, share actions with your friends and families. So as a new mother, I can say. I am trying to, you know, create a generation where we can talk about sustainable fashion, sustainable um, how to buy products that are sustainable for my child, for example. Everything that I'm buying is pre-loved. So that's where we start with education. If you can go back to the next slide. This is a sort of uh, uh, the session that we did, just wanted to touch upon. These are rural kids in Pune, Maharashtra, and we are doing a design thinking session. So uh, this is a place called Jundar, and we created a small team uh, where these guys are sitting together and jotting down their problems and the everyday things that they're using that are probably can be made sustainable. So they've jotted down 10 items and they have created themselves a list of items that can be sustainable in future. For example, one of them created a pen that can be charged via solar and then they can go back and that pen can you know throw light and then they can do their homework because there is no electricity so some activities like these that we have been doing and it has been picking up really well so just wanted to do this another thing that we did as we came back uh, from antarctica was this is a group of people Again, uh, the picture on the left that you see is from an IFS officer, Deep, uh, who had joined us in this expedition. So when uh, this is a this is a place called Nagarhol Tiger Reserve, and when we're talking about uh, another education uh, area, which is conscious uh, travel or responsible travel. So when we were in Antarctica, one thing that was also mentioned by Sukanya. Uh, we were very careful of how we are walking, what we are taking, and what we are bringing back. Uh, we were careful about not to disturb any wildlife there. I think that's where we learned how to be in a fragile ecosystem. And unfortunately, this is not something that is being taught to us. That is, This is something that we have forgotten. Uh, a place like Ladakh uh, that is so fragile uh, is, has suddenly seen an influx of tourism and is on the verge of, you know, uh, uh, 
a disruption uh, not to you know being uh, being very blunt about it especially in the last decade so uh, this this reserve that you see is a nagar hole tiger reserve and they did a clean up drive and this is only plastic bottles and they collected more than 2 tons of only plastic bottles so where are we going wrong we are going to a place like ladakh we are going to a place like nagar hole tiger reserve and we are not being careful about how we are using our own uh plastics or our own material so when we are try- i think as individuals we have to be very careful about what we are taking small steps like you know uh, you must have seen many tourist places with packets and you know um, garbage all over strewn across i think that's where we are going wrong being careful about bringing your own bags not leaving the place cleaner and how we found it uh, is is the core message that we should be uh, looking forward to again on picture on the right is of a clean up drive on the o- ocean waste that we did and on another uh, you can see vabo as well uh, this is about cleaning a sun- forest which is sanjay one national sanjay one and we cleaned up the plastic from there okay. to the next slide uh, rosita you want to mention the uh, this is about the daily dump i think yeah uh, thanks so much somma that's so it's so nice to also hear like the practical insights you know like i think till now so far everybody uh, has been really patient uh, audience so thanks again for listening to us uh, the antarctica journey but this is something now where all of us together can come together for these action so on your screen actually you see kind of a culmination of uh, some of us from team india what we've been doing uh, and we keep sharing it uh, you know in our whatsapp groups and trying to inspire each other So on the first uh, left hand side of uh, top row if you uh, speak about uh, that's like a leaf composter uh, so it's a composting unit uh, offered by uh, daily dump this organization based in bangalore some of you who might follow shark tank season might have seen them in uh, this uh, season 2 they had featured and this is a simple solution they've been propagating the solution since 2006 i keep to know about it only in 2012 uh, when i was studying in, in during my masters program and this is a simple kind of a very basic prototype that anybody can make on their own in the community or order from them and this helps in really composting all the dry leaves so in so many of our neighborhoods and colonies we see that these dry leaves are burnt and when they burn they release toxic fumes air pollution is also caused by a lot of open agriculture waste burning so these are some simple solutions you can kind of like uh, take back to your daily life if you look at uh, the indian household waste uh, constitution most of our dustbin is actually kitchen waste it only has vegetable peels you know coffee concoctions tea bags basic organic waste that we can use at our home to create compost instead of throwing it out sending it to the landfill and in the landfill what happens is methane is created so as sukanya had highlighted it's one of the greenhouse gases which is more dangerous than carbon dioxide so a simple act uh, of like individual or household level composting can actually you can do your bit by you know helping the planet uh, other uh, there is a car that you see on the screen uh, that picture is uh, from one of our fellow expedition teammates from team india avinash he is based in bangalore and again what he's doing here is in this car he's actually traveled more than 2500 kilometers but this car does not use the typical fuel it uses bio biofuel so he uses a blend of you know fuel and he has been doing a lot of awareness campaigns by driving this car from india to nepal i think he had uh, done that journey and now he's going to travel more just to propagate and make people aware there are better fuel choices available there are more sustainable options of how we are deriving our energy so biofuels is something again that is really coming up and it will be here to stay while we are speaking about mobility and other options but these sustainable mobility options are coming up which we need to be aware of and on the same side if you see the right uh, in the second row the last picture on the right side the plates that you see these are actually again uh, something that avinash has been working on uh, it's very very interesting so we know how our cutlery is uh, made up of plastic right uh, in so many of our urban centers in cities we order from swiggy zomato and uh, we always end up with a lot of a lot of plastic disposable so this plate is actually made up from uh, a leaf actually a plant so it's actually fully biodegradable and these kind of cutlery biodegradable cutlery uh, you know he's trying 
uh, with the help of other actors and uh, this is also the future right like how we relook at our own consumption when we host parties in our home or when we actually you know buy a simple uh, kind of a party plate uh, for hosting a function in our home we have the choice of selecting something which is less harmful to the environment so i think web have also mentioned about these informed choices right whether you do this informed choices through media stories you know home to vote right but also informed choices on what you have in your shopping bag so your shopping bag i always say can change the world decide to purchase or most importantly what you decide not to purchase when you go out to shop each time actually can save the planet in a big way and we often think that you know we are just individual people how does it make a difference if one person changes but one person can start and then they can help in the multiplier effect when i started composting during daily dump i used to hear a lot of these tanas a lot of these excuses that you know you doing this will not change the world but now just to give you some basic data uh, like me there are so many individuals who joined the movement so as a collective as a multiplier effect we are able to offset 50000 kg of wet waste every day from the landfill and since 2006 actually daily dump through the simple composting method have been able to save 22000 tons of carbon dioxide from being emitted so whenever someone asks uh, you know what is the power of one person you can give this example that the power of one person is that the one person can start a spark that spark can become a fire when all of us come together as a multiplier effect so over back to somya for this i'm so zita this guy has actually distracted me so <laughs> taking over but i think you put it beautifully and that's what the entire crux that we wanted to communicate to start off you know to give you a picture of how you can take a good key next step uh, you know going forward we created a cheat sheet uh, in the next slide this is something you can start off with uh, give yourself one marks if you are doing um, these things so we can go next and you can see um, options coming in and see where do you stand if you, are, if you don't know some things that you are not doing yet these can give you an idea of uh, you know where you can start off because everybody looks to get sustainable and you know sustainability is also not cheap it doesn't come easy you know when we talk about even sustainable travel they say uh, you know it's not possible to you know always travel sustainably or always buy sustainable clothes because it is expensive but there are smaller things that you can do uh, that you can start off with that will eventually lead to you know bigger impact so carry your own cloth bags as i said taking a paper bag or taking another cloth bag from does not make you sustainable because it's again one additional thing that we are introducing to this planet say no to plastic straws plastic cutlery you can carry your own metal cutlery watch out for microplastics what do we mean by microplastics anything that is there are smaller plastics your glitter your party um, products that you're buying even even when you're cutting your um, milk packets and if you are keeping it separate if you leave a little bit attached because those microplastics are the hardest to uh, you know uh, recycle or even to biodegrade and they end up in our you know oceans and then fishes and eventually uh, you know you would see heart wrenching pictures uh, they have microplastics stuck down their throat try to take bucket baths avoid bath tubs and especially Uh, again going back to travel it's again a mat something that's close to my heart because we went to antarctica uh we saw how our actions matter uh at immediate immediately we saw that you know uh, so especially if you are traveling to a place where uh, it's it's not it, it's not the natural ecosystem like maybe rajasthan or maybe ladakh or a, or a tiger reserve try to change your lifestyle to the ecosystem that is naturally there get introduced to toy library cloth diapers which i am personally doing explore pre loved sections what do we mean anything pre loved even pre loved fashion i am buying everything the baby gears the baby strollers because those things you are not introducing more in the planet uh you can say no to glitter you can compost your trash as rosita mentioned uh try to do a car free sunday it's actually very rewarding 
um you can uh, take a public transport it can become a lifestyle choice you know as a public uh, outing in a public transport as a family uh, you can organize local cleanup drives you can connect with us uh, and you know we can put you in touch with many people who are doing cleanup drives you can organize your own in your society in your schools and colleges and of course to plant a sapling every month and ensure it becomes a shrub or a tree these are some small things of course there are many things you can do and please feel free to add in comments and what is it that you would like to do and let's see where you stand what are your scores and our youngest climate champion supports it i think we can hear it through the noise he's making but uh, it's uh, he's also contributing actually he's uh, very young not even one year old but uh, using pre love toys pre love clothes uh, you know so that the parents don't have to you know really like buy new things each time True. i think that's uh, you're already walking the talk so, yeah. and especially for i think a lot of these things are <laughs> A lot of these things are not for long use. Uh, these are pretty short term use. So that way also we can think. Okay, I'm gonna be on mute. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was he was a great patient. Uh, yeah. Yeah. He scored to the story. He <laughs> scored to an Arctic story. Yeah. <laughs> So I think with that it brings us to I think our uh, last slide. Uh, this is uh, something we'll keep on adding to. Actually, uh, we were collecting this uh, just uh, in between us. But uh, before we share the presentation, also Radhika, man, with you to share with the larger students, maybe those who couldn't be part of the program today. We were sharing some uh, very very interesting things to kind of look out for. Uh, some of the documentaries that you should watch. Our personal favorite is The True Cost on Netflix, and we were discussing about it amongst ourselves, which basically speaks about fast fashion and the whole, uh, you know, industry. Personally, this changed me, and I think Sukanya as well when we watched this because we were even not aware about uh, the concept of fast fashion. which are the ethical brands to buy or not buy from and it completely changed my shopping bag at least uh, so this conscious consumerism movement is starting uh, there are some other links that we want to share with you perhaps later when we share this presentation back with you but we do conscious we've spoken a lot and you guys have been like such a great audience um, i just wanted to uh, you know pass it over back to you radhika ma'am and we are happy to you know have a dialogue and uh, if energy is still left in the room some questions as well thanks radhika and uh, sukanya samia and vaibhav uh, uh, i think it was really nice having each one of you personally share your uh, interest your passion and you know your intent of how you as individuals and collectively the small group that went to antarctica felt for something and you know walked the talk not walked you know i mean sailed the talk and you're back sharing with us so let's see if there are any questions online there was a question asked by good genie about the average temperature i don't know if it was answered on the chat that was during sukanya's presentation the a uh, question popped up on the chat and uh, i don't know if you answered okay. sukanya and if there okay any i saw your mistake Um, yeah yeah so so if there are any questions from people who are online please either put them on the chat or unmute yourself and then uh, of course people who are here in the room could even ask questions so anybody who has a question online uh we have a few participants you can put them on the chat or unmute yourself meanwhile anybody here in the room would you like to take the mic and ask a question or give a comment a response anybody you can just step up and use the mic yeah i'm just answering uh, for uh, the question for uh, from gujini the uh, average temperature is between uh, minus 10 to minus 60 degrees so it changes as we move along from the coast to the most interior parts right? and uh, so a 40 degree uh, warm average if we're talking about coast it would mean that minus 10 degree means if it's a 40 degree uh, increase in average temperature it would mean 30 degree centigrade so minus 60 degree it would mean minus 30 degree centigrade which would also impact the environment in a, a massive way because that that is a huge difference for the uh, continent that we are talking about and for the wildlife that needs a specific type of temperature to survive so yeah if that answers your question continue thanks sukanya i mean i was struck by this fact that you mentioned that the temperature was 40 degrees celsius more than you know the average 
temperature and if it's minus 10 to 16 then let's say zero that means it could go as up as more than even 40 around 40 degrees celsius this is something very hard to imagine right uh, yeah, yeah, sure. It was. Yeah. It started from the range of minus. So if you add to it, it did not cross. Like it did not become forty degrees Celsius. Like forty degrees Celsius. Yeah. It remained either in minus or came close to zero. Zero. Okay. Yeah. But that okay. is also very uh, alarming because we are talking about Antarctica and because we are talking about the temperature that we normally see there. All right. Thank you. Any other question from uh, participants online outside university? And of course, as Sukanya had mentioned in her presentation, the unusual rainfalls that we saw, uh, mm. it was also unusual for us. Yeah. Uh, we have a question from, from Anubha. Anubha. Yeah. Anubha, please ask your question. You can unmute yourself. We Anubha. can't hear you, Anubha. We can see you, but we can't hear you yet. You can. Uh, yeah, that's fine now. Yeah. Yeah, it was great listening to you. And um, I mean, I just have like two questions, like which was the route you took, you took. And also the other one is like, how, I mean, the, the how the uh, uh, changed the, uh, your life philosophy after being there for some time and coming back to the main world. And how has it changed you as a person and, and even the personal life? And uh, yeah, so I want to know about that. Uh, you want to start Sukanya with the route and then your take and we can do a round on our life. Oh, okay. Experience. Yeah. So the route, uh, we flew from our respective places in Argentina uh, uh, to Buenos Aires and uh, that's the capital of Argentina. And there, from there, we went to Ushuaia, which is the southernmost port of the, uh, of the world. So we went to Ushuaia and uh, we had uh, like a pre-expedition workshops and also like a training kind of sessions. We went to glaciers, you know, to to uh, test our physical strength uh, and to you know just test out the waters before going to the uh, to the Antarctic continent. From there, we went uh, to on the ship uh, to Antarctica through the Drake Passage, which is which is considered the roughest seas in the world. Uh, that was a uh, I would say a harrowing <laughs> experience. Uh, people were like throwing up uh, around us. People were sick. Uh, it was uh, scary as well. Uh, that Drake Passage was really uh, both like scary, but uh, when you get to Antarctica after that that uh, announcement, when uh, you finally they say that you have reached the Antarctic waters, that's a different uh, feeling altogether. Uh, I would say personally. Uh, before going uh, to the expedition, anyway, I was into this uh, field of climate change and sustainability. So on an individual level, I was doing what I could at that point. But after coming back, I feel like it has changed me completely. I, I think a bit more deeper at, as to how my actions are linking to the continent as well. Uh, and also, as you said, like while coming back from Antarctica, initially uh, going back to the world, I was in a bit of denial. I uh, didn't want to see my phone, uh, check my phone for probably a week. I didn't even uh, like after coming back, I couldn't even uh, talk to my mom saying that, you know, I am back. And she was very eager to know what happened. But I was in denial. I told her, give me time. I don't want to tell you now. I'm still processing it. And I, I suppose we are still processing some parts of it. So yeah, it really changed. Uh, it, it made my bond with the continent even deeper, I would say. Yeah. I think it was very similar for many of us. So a quick one from my side, I did not want to speak to anybody. <laughs> I came back, it was too much of processing and uh, really felt like we were part of something big and important, still feels like. And it, it also created a lot of pressure, to be honest, for me personally. So I, when I came back, I literally did not socialize at all. I was still uh, kind of like really uh, capturing, trying to capture what I saw, what I learned. And I dedicated uh, my April month. So we uh, on April 1st, I dedicated almost a month and kind of like quickly sharing because you tend to also lose a lot of these quick memories and reflections, right? So I made some video blogs for my crowdfunders because I had done a crowdfunding campaign. And I also uh, reached out to media outlets and spoke to them about the story. So for me, it was very important that as soon as we are back, we get the story out immediately because news people always have the immediacy. Otherwise, things become old. So we wanted to get that more. But I think we all were in kind of existential crisis for a few days or a few weeks for sure. 
and we still kind of wonder like your invitation actually radhika ma'am again reminded us because our last session together was on world ocean day last year in june when actually not only four of us eight of us from team india came together we'll share the recording with you it's on youtube it's a, a, a large presentation by the whole team india almost uh, parts of team india uh, so for us this was such a reminder that oh guys we have to keep on doing this so just yesterday webbe and me went to terry university we were there in uh, one session we interacted a bit or uh, shared our experience with the audience as well uh, today this session happened so it was a very good reminder actually your invitation that we have to keep on doing this and not lose this streak because we were part of something big and special but with that comes great responsibility yeah just pausing here for so men they have to share this yeah you can go ahead <laughs> so for me i think uh, again very similar but also a little different because i went with my husband so we were a couple so when we came back uh, it everything changed for us the way we were living uh, the way we are we were interacting it took us a moment that okay uh, we've seen nature in its raw form and you know uh, when you see a glacier and that's just the tip of it and and it's so huge look if you see some pictures of us i mean i'm sure uh, you you will see we are so tiny and you know it's so furious and i feel everything we start judging everything whatever we are doing is it important is it important enough uh, you know everyday milestones everyday deadlines you know is this important enough so compared to what existential crisis our planet is going through so we started uh, i went in a deep state of shock to be honest that uh, uh, we are not doing enough you know very soon life as we live is going to change and um, yeah but slowly it's sinking in and we are again back to deadline so again thank you radhika ma'am for organizing this because we were back in the groove of you know living life as usual but in a while again we keep reminding ourselves and we see keep seeing antarctica and you know we realize what is more important so thank you for this question um, yeah uh, for me again it was very overwhelming uh, because like in not even in the wildest of uh, my dreams i thought about going there but when i came back uh, with the feeling of overwhelming i also felt a lot of more purpose uh, to my work because i was already in the space on me i felt that there is more value i can add through my work and at the same time now i knew bigger picture having seen the effects of climate change in antarctica and having understood the bigger picture i felt that i was able to understand my work in a more deeper way and how my uh, actions at my daily work will add value so that was a sense of responsibility that came up after i uh, came back from and but still it felt really overwhelming and like somya said we are still sinking feeling and still trying to do our bit on a day to day basis so yeah that was my uh, experience after coming back Also, I'd like to add that Vaibhav is one of the youngest in the expedition team, uh, for, especially from Team India. I think uh, uh, while Sanya was the youngest, but you are still very young. So after coming back, he has done great things. So that really is inspiring even to us. Uh, he is still doing, and he is very active. And it's it's really great that even Antarctica expedition and our like this network that we have gained from the expedition. uh I, i that comes first to me uh, to my mind it's brilliant to meet these people and we are still in touch and we still uh, inspire each other so that has been the biggest takeaway i think uh, one of the biggest takeaway from the expedition yeah yeah i think we have unleashed the power of community and that's that's one of the biggest takeaways as well for us because we keep on learning from and again there was another person named vishnu who uh like cycled around 100 and there's actually he was the youngest from the indian team and uh, he cycled yeah, 130 km raising campaign wherein he went to different different places conducted awareness sessions about antarctica and raised money for the expedition so that was again a very inspiring action even before coming to the expedition and we were all like very inspired by his actions as well so a lot of inspiration all around for us and i just want to add like Rosita, Sutanya, and Vabo are in the sustainability uh, industry, it was so to say. But I am not. I was doing it on the side, 
but it was a very my core profession was not sustainability so i'm very much like you if you want to you know maybe want to get into sustainability but you're not from there and you know uh, you think you maybe you don't belong here no it's not this planet belongs to everyone and uh, i learned a lot with a community like this but it's 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 something that everybody can do small steps go a long way uh to answer one of the question in the chat box rosita uh, mentioned it uh, in a short way yeah the application process was uh, rigorous we had like three stages uh, which also yeah <laughs> and uh, uh, there were like uh, three stages two written and one uh, uh, interview and uh, it was uh, obviously uh, you have to have the basic environment and you have to have that uh, you know uh, a feeling of co like you're respecting the environment as well as you're respecting the coexistence the the sh space that you share uh with other wildlife and other ecosystems so uh why that is that comes through through the application process you are asked questions which you need to write in a way that is that would get you through the process you know that you have to show the respect for sustainability you have to show uh that you are aligned in the sustainable you know uh, approaches and the sustainable pathways you are aware of the basic like sustainability themes and the un sdgs and things like that so uh, i think uh, that get to know once you apply and you see the questions you get to know how we are we are saying that you know you need to have that like uh, somya doesn't have a sustainability background but she has that she did it on the side you know she was doing educational programs and things like that to you know promote this and things like that so uh, you can find out more about the process and about the application more on the website of 2041 foundation yeah uh rosita you want to answer that how oh, was the total expenditure of course now here uh, we can answer that in the chat just curious to hear from the room and radhika ma'am and if there are any more questions from the room from the physical we can come yeah. to So, physical audience, I I pass on your request to them. Any questions from here? No, Rosita, I don't think anybody has a question here, so uh, that doesn't matter. Now, my two things are that I, uh, I I think every little drop really matters. Like which each one of you are sparkling with that energy, and sparkling with that uh, with that. Uh, conviction that whatever you can do you must do and you will do and that's what matters at the end of the day because living consciously uh, on on uh, we are feeding on mother earth on planet earth it it end up literally it's nurtured us it's brought us this far it'll take us further down and the more conscious we are that like you all of have you talked about living responsibly in whatever way we can and i i really want to thank you uh for leaving these seeds uh, of thoughts in this conversation with all of us and it's a choice that everybody in this room physically or online people who have joined from all over the country uh it's a choice each one of us will make on uh, on the way forward you know where do we take this uh, conversation and i'm sure whoever is interested and wants to will find a way and a partner and a collaborator and a space and a platform Where more can happen, so I want to thank all of you. But uh, we have two important things to do together, and I want you to stay until the end if you can to add that little zinc to the uh, event. So one is the Dr. Golda who's sitting next to me here. I just uh, Rosita, I I got in touch with them only on Saturday, only on Saturday, and this is how the universe works. And on Sunday she said we'll give you the money for the quiz, you know, uh, prizes. I That's said, lovely. Yes, I really want to thank her and uh, Dr. Nandi Varman and this Ruby somewhere here. So they have come in from this. I want to just introduce the organization because uh, uh, for students, you know, a little bit of whatever comes along the way is nice. And so she is representing the association. She is uh, basically uh, she has a PhD in environmental sciences from Pondicherry University. and now she is the executive director of the association for promoting sustainability in campuses and communities in short apscc global right uh, golda yeah, yeah. yeah and can we have a little bit of uh, if you wish to leave the room you can
if you wish to leave the room, you can. You have a choice. If you want to be here, be here. If you don't want to be here, you can leave. Play the quiz, guys. Great no. <laughs> cash no. prizes there. Play the quiz. It will be fun. <laughs> yeah. So I just want to introduce the organization here. So APSC is an international organization which has consultative status with the United Nations. And it helps higher educational institutions and other educational institutions along with other campuses in framing policies, implementing action and research plans, empowering the students and staff community with the required skills, and hands out resources to sustainably implement and manage the conservation strategies and projects related to energy, water, waste, healthy food, and biodiversity. All these stated objectives are based on the principles of international agenda. So before we play the quiz, which is all ready, uh, so the people who are online, we have a slide which we will show shortly. The ones who are in the room have done some uh, quizzes on Kahoots in class, so it's not going to be easy for them, the platform. But we will introduce uh, to people who are joining us online. But before that, Golda would like to uh, share, you know, uh, chip in in the event by taking what we have called my Earth Day Pledge. So over to Golda. Thanks a lot. So you're all geared up? Yeah? So shall we go ahead with the pledge? Right. You have a copy of it? Or? No, so I, I don't doubt. have Okay. Okay. I'm taking the... Please repeat after me. So what you could do, you, yeah. could, you could say one line and we could repeat after. Sure, sure. Yeah. Let's do that. I'm taking the Earth Day pledge. I'm taking the Earth Day pledge. With love and gratitude. With love and gratitude. I commit to caring for the Earth. I commit to caring for the earth. I will be mindful. I will be mindful. Heartful and hopeful. Heartful and hopeful. I take responsibility for my actions. I take responsibility for my actions. And their impact on the planet Earth. And the impact on the planet Earth. From today, my actions will help to heal. From today, my actions will help to heal. Protect. Protect. And honor the earth. And honor the earth. I will learn to live in a more sustainable way. I will learn to live in a more sustainable way. And conserve natural resources and the ecosystem. And conserve natural resources and ecosystems. Together we will grow, we will grow a thriving world for all. A thriving world for all. Very happy day. Very happy Earth Day to all. Thank you. So Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you so much for your support, ma'am. That was really lovely to be part of this pledge. Yeah, that was beautiful. So, uh, that was really, a, a, I would say, a fitting uh, kind of a wrap up to our conversation and our uh, the seeding of this this new collaboration, which I hope will be 2024, 2025, and beyond 2048 if we survive and we we, <laughs> we exist. Great. So now, uh, Leo, will you please share the slide on the quiz uh, uh, for people who are now, how many? Uh, and Leo, the form, they will be, please, uh, you will all get a certificate of participation. Uh, so we need your correct spellings. So after the quiz is done, there's a very short uh, Google form. The link will be put on the chat. And uh, you, I request each one of you to fill up the uh, Google form, uh, which is people who are online as well as the people who are physically here. So those of you who take the uh, quiz in the class, you must fill up the feedback form after the quiz. But before we play the quiz, so all of you, you know how to play the Kahoot's quiz. Anybody new from no, uh, who's not from the department? No, everybody from the department. So they all know how to play the Kahoot's quiz. And here we have instructions here for... So how many of you are playing the quiz online? Can I have... Uh, uh, like in the chat, you can just say yes. Why? If you're playing the quiz, just put a why. So Anubhav is playing the quiz, yes. Good genie is playing the quiz. Who else? Anybody else? Okay, as of now, only two of you. So please have a look at the slide and I give you one or two minutes to, to kind of, uh, you know, get yourselves going. If you have any questions, please ask us. We we'll wait for you and there will be a game pin and the game pin will be uh, shared once you uh, have your laptop ready or your mobile, whatever ready. Uh, they can watch it, uh, uh, they can see the questions on the Google Meet. So if you have even a mobile to give your answers, so you can see the questions on the Google Meet screen. We'll be sharing it as a presentation. Uh, Anubhav, do you have a question? 
Anubhav, uh, do you have a question? You're just showing uh, expression of interest. I think he was just showing that. Uh, game pin, yeah. Okay, the game pin. So, uh, good genie, are you good? Good genie. Yes? So, we share the pin? Okay. So, Leo is going to share the pin. No, no, don't go. It's okay. No, no, please don't go. Please stay here. Nothing is so important than love. Please stay and play the quiz. Come on. Have a... There's no rules. You might just win. You know, you're leaving right now. You might just be the winner. So stay on. <laughs> it's just 10 minutes. The quiz will take it's 30 seconds and there are 12 questions. It's going to take only 10 minutes. So I think because then we should be there till the end. I mean, they, everybody is being there. Just 10 minutes. It's just 30 seconds for each question. And the 12, right, Leo? 12 questions. It's going to finish within 6 or 7 minutes. Then everybody can leave. So hang on, everybody. You stayed so long. Just have a little bit more steam. And then for people who are physically here, there's, there are refreshments. Sorry, we can't offer them online. But for those who are here, there are refreshments. Guys, we went to the end of the world to get you these questions. <laughs> Someone will share the game pin, right? The game pin is coming. We're just logging into our Kahoot account. And okay. uh, and then we'll be sharing it with you. We're just logging into Kahoot. Vaibhav here wants to join in the quiz as well. As like this is cheating, Vaibhav, you cannot. <laughs> yeah, I think also, the cash prize changed a lot of things for us. <laughs> <laughs> it's conflict of conflict of interest. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, pin. The again pin is loading. Okay. So the game pin is eight nine one five zero three. हाँ तो बता दो इसके बारे हाँ सिट भी था बता देंगे और तो फन ऑफ रेड जस्ट यू कैन हैव लाइक द स्क्रीन एंड एंड द फेसेस ऑन द साइड नो आई कैन लुक आई कैन लुक क्या तो इसका तो कहीं भी आ जाए जहां पे भी इंटरनेट आ जाए ना Everybody in here, how many people? Huh? 20, 33. No, more than 33 people here, yeah. Did you pass the table? Everybody, are you in? Can we start the game? Change your place if the internet is slow because we we'll start in a minute. We have another film and another quiz after that. 
for those who are interested and have patience they have a double bonus opportunity today if the internet is weak move around and go to a place where you have better internet आंसर के लिए आए हो सो ना हाउ मेनी पीपल डन एवरीबॉडी इन यस ओके सो लेट्स स्टार्ट द क्विज आलोक जस्ट चेक ऑन द मीट आलोक आर यू इन यस मैम एंड व्हाट अबाउट अनुभव आर यू इन अभी का अनुभव जैन अदर ओके सो वी स्टार्ट इन द क्विज नाउ Start the quiz, Leo. In between, for the screenshots, take that, huh? Okay. Take the screenshots. You have the correct answer. Antarctica is the fifth largest continent, and we have sixteen right answers. Great. Next question, please. So, as of now, this is a speed thing, right? This is a speed. This is not about correctness. This is about the fastest ones. The fastest ones may not be the correct ones, but they are the fastest. Okay. Next. So thirty two correct answers. That's that was a very easy question. Okay, great. Next question, please. Melting of ice in Antarctica can result in sea level uh, rise induced climate change results. Okay, next question. So the correct answer is Australia, and eighteen people got it right. Huh? Doesn't matter. Okay. Next question, Leo. Okay. The next question is started. The largest contributor to climate change is Okay next question
So the hottest year until now has been 2016. Okay, next question. So as you can see here, there are three correct answers. So if you chose any of them, you're right. Huh? <laughs> छे कौन है छे हमें क्या मालूम कौन है जो भी है उनको मालूम होगा जो भी है सो थ्री आंसर्स द करेक्ट इन दिस राउंड ओके ओके नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन So the two answers are fossil fuel and food paste. Okay, next question. Doesn't matter if you did not know. Now you know. You learnt it. So you learnt something new. किसी को भी नहीं मालूम था कितने कम लोगों को मालूम था Okay. Not bad. Sixteen got it right. Very good. Okay. Twenty one got it right. That's a good number. Next, second last question. How much plastic waste is produced every year?
Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And now the last question for this quiz, the first quiz. Yeah. Genie, the answers. Who's Arya in? Arya, Arya in? Yeah. Hello. Yeah. This is Alok. Yeah. Okay, now. Uh, one. Okay. They can't, they can't hear me. They can't hear. The winners that uh, uh, is showing up is on the, usually on the speed, on the fastest uh, uh, one, you know, the fastest. So we are going to, after the session is over, uh, we're going to put, to put the link on the, for the, for the people who are online. Then we can share, not a problem, but uh, for the ones who are online. So what's going to happen is that uh, we're going to go into the Kahoot's uh, app, I mean, our account, and there is a report that's generated of how many correct answers. Uh, and we need to go into that and look at that. And we, I think and only Anubhav and uh, uh, Alok have joined in from outside along with uh, students here. So that Excel sheet that Kahoot's will, um, uh, will give us the correct how many questions are answered correctly. And once we know that, then I will confirm after checking and verifying the answers. So this is good that these three were fastest and maybe they are the top ones. I don't know. But we need to cross-check and verify. So we will do that tonight after the second quiz is over and we'll let everybody know what are the results. Uh, because I am in touch with everybody, so we'll do that. Uh, you can enter, Leo. Yep. So now Leo is entering the feedback form. For the few of you who have joined online, please give your feedback. And uh, those of you who are not online, we will share it as a WhatsApp message with you. Leo can share it uh, with any class representative. And you also should fill up the form and give your quick feedback, which we'll also share with uh, uh, Rosita, Sukanya, Samya, and Vaibhav, and so that they can get an idea about what you thought about the session. If you liked it, didn't like it, it was boring, interesting, etc., etc. So share your feedback. And uh, does anybody else have anything to say for now? Okay. So uh, I want to thank everybody. Uh, we are going to have a short break physically where they can fuel, put some fuel into the bodies. And then we will be screening for tomorrow, which Rosita has helped. Uh, uh, and the quiz for the second film has been made by the UNDP team in New York. So the questions have come from UNDP New York and the questions of quiz is set up. And after you've seen the film, that quiz is based on the film. So you've seen the film and then you play the next quiz for whoever is interested. Okay, but we'll take a break, 20, 25 minutes, 20 minutes for everybody to use the washroom and eat and whatever. So, um, yeah. Share all the links here uh, and you should copy the chat before you close the meeting. Before you close the meeting, you can uh, copy the chat. Thank you. Can you have your sequence. Look who will serve. Who will serve. One second, one second. Uh, they would like a group photo. So can you please join? Yeah. Please, all of you. Leo, can you keep the screen behind if they haven't logged out? Yeah. We'll have a good photo. We will try with you in the background, all of you and us ahead. Just come ahead. Suresh, fat-a-fat, do it. Chair, 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 do it.
Come, come, facing this side. Quickly. Don't leave. First group photo, then go for freshmen. Yeah, here, facing this side. So we'll have them uh, behind us. You cl close the messages and copy the chat before we close the meeting. Copy the chat.